Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll teach you how to use jQuery Ajax in ASP.NET Core Razor Pages. So let's start. First I'll open the startup.cs class. So here I'll be adding some namespaces. The very first namespace is Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot MVC. The next namespace is Newtonsoft dot JSON dot serialization. Now let's move to the configure services method. So here I'll be calling the add MVC function. Then I'm setting the compatibility version to version 2.1. Now here I am calling add JSON options and I am setting the serializer for the JSON serialization. I am making use of Newton sort JSON serialization in this project. The reason being that the default serializer converts the property names to camel case. For example, if your property name is first name, then when you are accessing the property through Ajax on client side, then it will be changed to small letter first name. Like for example, the capital letter F in the property will be changed to small letter f so in such cases it becomes very difficult to actually access the properties and let's say on server side you have capital f and on client side you have small f so it leads to inconsistency in the code also so to avoid that i am using newtons of json serializer which solves this problem and makes it easy to use finally i am adding the header name for the anti forgery token the same header name will be used on client side while making use of the jquery ajax function So this completes the startup.cs class code. Now I'll be adding a new class to the models folder. I am naming it as person model. Meanwhile, I would like to inform you that if you are unable to understand ASP.NET Core Razor pages, please check out the Hello World tutorial video. The link for the video is available in the description. So here I have added two properties, name and date time. Now let's move to the index model class. Here I am adding a new handler method which will handle the Ajax call. I am naming it as on post get time and it is accepting a parameter name which will be sent from the client site. As you can see, I have created an object of person model class. And in the name property, I am setting the name received from the parameter. And then in date time property, I am setting the current date time. Finally, I am returning the object in JSON format back to the client or in other words, the jQuery Ajax calling function. Finally, I'll add a attribute validate anti forgery token to the method this particular attribute will make sure that this particular handler method validates the anti forgery token now let's move to the razor page now here i am creating the anti forgery token using the html helper classes the anti forgery token function creates an html hidden field with the token value Next, I am creating an HTML text box which will accept the name value. Then I am creating a button and when this button is clicked, the jQuery Ajax call will be made to the server side method. So now I have inherited the jQuery minified file and will start writing a jQuery code. So first I'm adding the document ready event holder. And inside that I'll assign a click event holder to the button. Now inside the click event holder, I am calling the jQuery Ajax function. The very first attribute is type and I'm setting it as post.
in the url you might have noticed that uh, i have removed the on post prefix when you are calling an action method using ajax you have to remove the on post prefix otherwise the function won't work Now inside the before sent event handler, I'll be setting the anti forgery token header. The value of the anti forgery token will be fetched from the hidden field choosing the name request verification token. Now you might have a question that from where I got this particular hidden field name. So for that you need to simply run the page and do a view source. And after that you will see a hidden field with this particular name. So here I am fetching the value of the anti forgery token from the hidden field itself using the name. In the data attribute I am setting the value of the name parameter and the value of the name parameter is fetched from the name text box. Now inside the success event handler, I am displaying the value of the name and also the value of the date time returned from the server side action method inside a JavaScript alert message box. The next event handler is to handle failure and here simply the response text is displayed in javascript alert message box. In similar way I am creating an handler for handling error and here also the response text will be displayed in javascript alert message box. So with this we complete our programming part and now it's time to run our project and see it in action. Before moving ahead, I would like to inform you that an article has already been posted on this topic. The link for the article and the code sample are available in the description. Also, if you need any further help, feel free to ask on forums. The link for the forum is also available in the description. Finally, I would like to request you to please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. So now I'll type in my name in the text box. And I'll click on the button. As you can see, my name as well as the current date time from the server is being displayed in JavaScript alert message box. So with this, we come to the end of this video. Today we learned how to do an Ajax call in HP.NET Core Razor Pages. Also, we learned how to send anti forgery token using jQuery Ajax call to server side method. Also, we learned how to solve the JSON serializer camel case issue by using the Newton soft json serializer thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon goodbye